Okay, today's focus is going to be on something called the mean value theorem, the MVT. So if we look at our list here, we're going to apply the mean value theorem, and we're also going to work on finding the connection between Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem. So if you haven't watched the Rolle's theorem video yet, you might want to go back and do that. A reminder that the three conditions for Rolle's theorem, first one is that f of x must be continuous on the closed interval a to b, must be differentiable on the open interval from a to b. So remember, this means that you are able to take the derivative. The way that we double check that is we make sure that f prime of x is continuous. So no jumps, holes, vertical asymptotes, discontinuities. The last thing then is f of a is equal to f of b. So the heights at the endpoints are equal. Then there exists c on that open interval from a to b such that f prime of c equals zero, right? So we have a horizontal tangent because we're guaranteed to have a maximum and a minimum. So we're guaranteed to have at least one turnaround spot, right? And we turn around with a derivative equal to zero, a critical number, okay? So draw a picture that illustrates rolls. I'm gonna draw one like this. So we have all of our nice, smooth, continuous curve, no corners, cusps, discontinuities, right? All of that good stuff. Uh, here, what ends up happening is that the slope of this red line, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, will be equal to, that's supposed to be blue, equal to the slope f prime of c but we're talking about a guaranteed minimum or maximum. Those should be C's. Minimum or maximum. So F prime of C, this whole part in red, ends up being zero. And this makes sense to us because the slope of that red line is zero. Because if you have F of B minus F of A, and B, F of B and F of A were equal, the numerator would be zero. All right, so let's extend that to something called the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem can be best described if we think about merging onto the highway. So here's our distance from the merge. Here's our time. So I'm going to start distance. My distance is very far away from the merge. And I'm going to be merging, speeding up until I actually get onto the ramp right, or sorry, onto the freeway. So if I think about this as my distance time, my velocity, those of you that are taken, have taken physics, would be my change in distance over change in time, right? Miles per hour, kilometers per minute, whatever it is that you're measuring in. So if I could just find the slope, the average rate of change, a rock, I could do that by finding the slope of this red line, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And what the mean value theorem tells us is that there will be some place, if your function is continuous and differentiable, there will be some place where we have a tangent line slope that is parallel to the average rate of change. So I rock will be equal to A rock. Okay, so if we look up here, there's also a point in the interval which is the instantaneous rate of change, right? Instantaneous velocity, that's I rock, will be equal to the average rate of change, the average velocity, which is A rock. So old school slope, slope of the secant, will be equal to new school slope, slope of the tangent, okay? Thinking about rolls, if I took this graph, here's my f of b, here's my f of a, and I turned it, so let's say I moved this red dot 
up to here and I redrew my graph like this, do we see our connection to rolls? Right? The mean value theorem is basically rolls on its side. The mean value theorem is a more general version of rolls. What I mean by that is you could think about the mean value theorem as like a rectangle and rolls theorem is like a square. Okay, rolls theorem is very specific. Mean value theorem applies more generally. So our function still has to be continuous. Our function still has to be differentiable, which again, one more time, that means that f prime of x is continuous. We want to check for discontinuities. Then our instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of the tangent line, will be equal to the average rate of change, which is the slope, a rock, a rock which is the slope of the secant line. Here we go. Nice visual for you. Rolle's theorem, remember, f prime of c ends up being equal to zero. It's a very specific case. Whereas the mean value theorem, f prime of c, is equal to whatever that slope of the secant line is of the endpoints. All right, so let's try one. Plot a graph of f of x equals 6 over x on the closed interval from 1 to 4. Find a point c in the interval for which the mvt is true. Then plot the secant and tangent lines. I'm going to block this off for a second. All right, so plotting the graph of 6 over x. We can use our calculator to do this, or you can just sub in 1, and you get 6. You can substitute in 4, and you get 1.5. And then because of the vertical asymptote at 0, we end up with this type of graph. But because we're only looking from 1 to 4, I'm going to focus just on that closed interval. So there's my graph. It says find a point C in the interval for which the MVT is true. Well, let's make sure that the MVT is true. Is f of x continuous from 1 until 4? Yes. Yes, it is. Is f of x differentiable? Yes, by looking, right? We don't have any corners, cusps, discontinuities. We can double check that, though, um, by checking the continuity. So the continuity of f, the only problem spot would be at 0. But 0 is not in our interval, so we're fine. Let's check f prime. f prime of x is going to be negative 6 over x squared. You can do that derivative for yourself. The only problem spot f prime has is also 0, but 0 is not on our interval, which means that f, because f prime is continuous, f of x is differentiable. So we're good there. OK, so the MVT should be true, which means we need to show that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is going to be equal to, I'm already going to put in f prime of x. Get that negative sign in there. Good job, Schwartz. Um, all right, so we just need to work on finding this a rock, this average rate of change. Well, you can do that by a graph. Or we can do that, you know, a more precise approach. f of b minus f of a. f of b was 1.5 minus f of a was 6 over 4 minus 1 equals negative 6 over x squared. So then 3 halves minus 6. 6, we're going to make that into 12 halves. This is going to be negative 9 halves over 3 equals the instantaneous rate of change. This then ends up being negative 3 halves equals negative 6 over x squared. Do a little cross multiply. You end up with x equals plus or minus 2. But we would want to keep only the positive 2. We'll call it c, actually, right? We're supposed to be finding that c value. We want to keep the positive 2 because we're only supposed to be guaranteed between, zero, between 1 and 4. So at x equals 2, the slope, that was a terrible drawing, the slope of my tangent line is equal to the slope of my secant line, that slope being negative 3 halves. So one little thing to note, you could if you wanted to. Remember we talked about f prime of c in the Rolle's theorem video, right? f prime of c is what we're supposed to be used, equal to. So you could, instead of calling this f prime of x, right, the more general form, you could 
choose to always actually set it equal to f prime of c and solve for c if that helps you keep track of your variables a little bit better. All right, so our lines really are parallel, which is great. The last thing I just want to remind you, the equation of a secant line is point-slope form. So is the equation of a tangent line. Mm -hmm. I jumped ahead of myself. All right, so the equation of a secant line, you need a point. I'm going to choose this point, 1, 6. And you need the slope, which we found was negative 3 halves. The equation of a tangent line, you need a point. 2 comma, I can find that 6 over 2, right, because the original function was 6 over x. 6 over 2, hopefully everybody's okay with, is 3. And then this slope right here is going to end up being that negative 3 halves. But you can also find that again if you want to, f prime of x, remember, was negative 6 over x squared. And so if you sub in, you would get negative 6 over 4, which is, in fact, negative 3 halves, okay? So equation of a secant line, equation of a tangent line, both of them need a point and a slope. All right, this last one. Suppose that you place $1,000 in a retirement fund that has an annual percent yield of 9%. The number of dollars at a time t would be given by d of t. 1,000 is your initial investment, 1 plus the 0.09 being the rate raised to the time t. When you retire 50 years from now, how much money will be in this account? At what average rate does your money increase? Use your calculator to calculate the instantaneous rate at which your money is increasing at zero. And use your calculator to help you find the time at which the instantaneous rate equals the average rate. Okay, so I'm going to set you up with each one of these. You're going to actually use your calculator. So when you retire 50 years from now, you're really finding D of 50 equals 1,001.09 to the 50th. You can type that in. At what average rate does your money increase? Well, you're going to want D of 50 minus D of 0 over 50 minus 0 because average rate would be old school slope. Use your calculator to calculate the instantaneous rate. So you're going to take D dx. This is something you were supposed to watch in your video this weekend. It's math 8, if you need that. You're going to evaluate that at x equals 0. And then you're going to evaluate that again at x equals 50. And then this last one. Calculator to help you find the time at which the instantaneous rate equals the average rate. Well, you're going to want to take the derivative in your y1, the derivative of 1,001.09x for all x equals x, just like the video. And in y2, you're going to put your number from part b, and you're going to find where they intersect. So go ahead and do that, and then pa well, pause your video to go do that. Come back when you're ready to compare answers. All right, I'm just going to show you the answers in my calculator. So for part A, we get $74,357.52. For part B, my average rate of change, note that my initial amount was $1,000 because that's what I started with. So taking the average rate of change, I get $1,467.15 per year. Then I did my instantaneous rate at zero, my instantaneous rate at 50, and I found the average of those two was 3,200. So can we just average the slopes at the endpoints to get the average rate of change? No, that's what that question is getting at. The last part then says to use your calculator to find the time. So I typed in the graph of the derivative, which is the slope thing in red, and then y equals the number I found in part b. And I'm going to second trace, number 5, intersect. My first curve is this red one. My second curve is this black one. I'm going to guess it happens at about year 30. Turns out it happens at year 32.89. So what we're getting there is that we're not talking about halfway. Usually we're used to averages or means being the middle. Okay, But mean, remember, is not the median. That's what we're trying to show here, that it's not just adding stuff at the ends and divide by two. There's a little bit more work involved. Mean value.